We sang about grace this morning. We sing about the presence of the Lord. We sing about the blood of Jesus Christ. It all makes the difference when we have Christ in our lives. And no matter what we're facing, I was listening to a preacher this morning and he said, you know, sometimes even in your life, sometimes you are trying to change people, but God is using those people to change you. Amen? Amen. Sometimes you don't understand that, and we don't understand that, but God works in ways that we don't always understand, but he does things according to his plan and according to his purpose. And that's why we serve him, and that's why we trust him, because he is God, and he knows a whole lot better than we do. Isn't that great? Amen. Amen. Lord, why don't you get your Bibles and go with me to the book of John. And we're going to pick up from where we left off last Sunday. The book of John, chapter 6. We're taking this slow march through the book, or I should say a steady march through the book of John. So if you have your Bible, stand with me as we honor the Lord. And I want to read, begin to read at verse 22. Last week we look at Jesus coming to his disciples, walking on the water, and we're going to pick up from where we left off. John 6, beginning to read at verse 22. The day following, when the people which stood on the other side of the sea saw that there was none other boat there, save that one where into his disciples were entered, and that Jesus went not with his disciples into the boat, but that his disciples were gone away alone. Howbeit there came other boats from Tiberias, nigh unto the place where they did eat bread. After that, the Lord had given thanks. When the people therefore saw that Jesus was not there, neither his disciples, they also took shipping and came to Capernaum, seeking for Jesus. And when they had found him on the other side of the sea, they said unto him, Rabbi, when camest thou hither? Jesus answered them and said, Verily, verily, I say unto you, ye seek me not because you saw the miracles, but because ye did eat of the loaves and were filled. Labor not for the meat which perisheth, but for that meat which endureth unto everlasting life, which the Son of Man shall give unto you, for him hath God the Father sealed. Then said they unto him, What shall we do that we might work the works of God? Jesus answered and said unto them, This is the work of God, that ye believe on him whom he hath sent. They said therefore unto him, What sign showest thou then that we may see and believe thee? What dost thou work? Our fathers did eat manna in the desert, as it is written. He gave them bread from heaven to eat. Then Jesus said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Moses gave you not that bread from heaven, but my Father giveth you the true bread from heaven. For the bread of heaven, the bread of God, is he which cometh down from heaven and giveth life unto the world. Then they said unto him, Lord, evermore give us this bread. And Jesus said unto them, I and the bread of life. He that cometh to me shall never hunger, and he that believeth on me shall never thirst. Father, we thank you for the bread that comes from heaven. We thank you for your word. Your word reminds us that man shall not live by bread alone, the natural bread, but by every word that comes from the mouth of God. So speak, Lord, that we may hear. 
Speak that we might receive. And Lord, help us to receive the bread that, that you are seeking to give to us. Open our ears and open our eyes, Lord, that we might see. Speak to us as we wait. Lord, let your presence be in this place to minister to us this morning afresh and anew and to open to us the word of God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Bless the Lord. Hallelujah. So I want to talk to you this morning on the simple subject, the bread of life. The words of Jesus, I am the bread of life. As we continue to look at this scripture, continuing from last week, we see that the people came looking for Jesus. Prior, a few days hence, they had come looking for him for, to, to follow, to see the miracles, and they did see a miracle. They, they did see Jesus. He fed 5,000, and they wanted to make him king right there and then. That 5,000 plus with a few fish and a few loaves of bread. And then Jesus moved, removed himself from the crowd because they wanted to make him king, but they wanted to make him king on their own terms. And Jesus removed himself and had his disciples go over onto the other side. And so where we pick up from here, the people are looking for Jesus and they realize that he's not where they thought he would be. And so they follow, they came looking for him. You know, it's interesting because, you know, people today like to have a large crowd. When, when uh, you have a large crowd following you, 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 you People begin to think that you are special, that, that you are somebody because you have a following. Jesus was not swayed by such a large crowd following after him. He knew that they had a hidden agenda, that they weren't just following him because they loved him. They weren't just following him because they, 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 they wanted to be close to him. And when they came, he said, you are following me, not, not because you even saw the miracles, but the reason you are following is because you had your belly full. You're following me because you ate free foods. You were following me because I gave you food to eat and you didn't have to pay for it. See, at first they came to see the miracles. Once they saw the miracle that they got the food and he fed them and they didn't have to pay for it. Now they were following him because hoping that perhaps they would get another free meal. And it's interesting because there are so many people that follow Jesus for the wrong reasons. There are many people that are following Jesus, especially even in our day to day. In many places, in many Christians or many people that call themselves Christians are following Jesus for the wrong reasons. Some are looking for a larger paycheck, a bigger house, a nicer car, all kinds of things. They're following for the wrong reasons. And Jesus called the, this crowd on it. You are not following me for the right reason, but you are following me because I gave you food to eat. Someone sent me a clip or from on WhatsApp sometime this week. Um, a young man, Jacob Dufour, I believe he he works, you know, um, on film, a, a filmmaker, and he said he tried out something because he took the words of Satan when he was tempting Jesus. And he put it out on Facebook. He used a quote from Luke chapter 4, 7. It says, if you worship me, it will all be yours. And he put it out there. And people begin, he began to have hits. He began to have so, I should say, comments. People were saying, and these are Christians 
many of them were Christians. Amen. 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 They were amen, giving an amen to something that the enemy had said. That Satan said, if you worship me, I'm going to give you the world. And, and when he said, when he saw that, that he was amazed. He said, even one of the people that commented on it was a pastor. And he responded to him to say, do you know where this is from? He said there were 167 comments. There were only a few that said, that is not God speaking. That is the enemy. And he was amazed that many people who claimed to be Christians didn't even know the word. Weren't spending time reading the word that they didn't know the words of Satan as opposed to the words of Jesus Christ. But what is amazing is that these days are so big, so many people are into it for the material reward and the more weightier things of life are diminishing so fast. It's the same with this crowd. This is the same crowd that wanted to make him a king to meet their demands, but this is the same crowd that will refuse to make him Lord and obey his commands. Isn't it interesting how, how many want Jesus, but on their own terms? Lord, I will serve you if you do this for me. Lord, I will serve you if you give me a house. Lord, I will serve you if you give me a car. Lord, I will serve you if you give me this job, if you give me a bigger castle, and, and, and if you give me something that whatever they need, I will serve you. And it's interesting because I've met people, I have ministered to people who wanted to serve God. They were in the house of the Lord. They came because they were going through some things. They were about to lose it, a spouse or they were going through a divorce or they were going through some things. And they come into the house of the Lord and, and they, 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 they're diligent in coming and serving God. And then the moment they got what they wanted, they forgot about it. He was no more important. He was not high on their agenda anymore because they got what they wanted. Christ is calling us to a higher place of worship and service. He says, don't work for the meat that perishes. Don't work for the meat that goes away. Don't work for the meat that you can only eat and then it disappears and then it comes out on the other side. Don't spend your life building, building bigger castles that, that are going to be torn down. Don't spend your life securing a mansion, mansion down here, but secure a mansion in heaven. Don't spend your life amassing a more wealth and a fortune that has no eternal you but stand, lay up your treasures in heaven where it doesn't get stolen and it doesn't rust out. Paul said in Colossians chapter 3, if ye then be risen with Christ, seek those things which are above where Christ is on the right hand of God. And then he said, set your affections on things above and not on things on this earth. Why? He said, because you died, or you are dead. You died to the world, but you ought to be alive to Christ. Seek those things which are above. The one in Christ. We as Christians are to be motivated to seek after greater things. Not things on this earth, but things above. As Jesus said, wherever you are there your heart will be also. In other words, anything that you treasure will retain your affection. 
Anything that you treasure will retain your affection. And sometimes we often think that the greatest need in our lives is physical. The greatest need in our lives is have food. I watch sometimes people go after food like there is no tomorrow. <laughs> and I heard someone say, one of those people said, I don't live to eat. I eat to live. And it's amazing because, you know, where, where, where I am and where I work, you know, we have this, every once in a while, there's a whole lot of food put out for, for a meeting that's left over and it's gone just like that. And it's always the same people that's collecting for today and collecting for tomorrow and all that. And I remember saying, I don't live to eat, I eat to live. And all I can say is, really? I could be fooled by that. But we're not called to live to eat, but to go after the bread. They were seeking after food. God or Jesus was calling them to seek after him. And Jesus simply said, he said, my meat is to do the will of the one who sent me. So in the same way that he saw the Father's will as his meat, his desire for us is to be fed with the bread from heaven that brings us life and life eternal. And Jesus said, I am that bread. I am that bread. I am the one who will give you life. I am the bread from heaven. Don't seek after and so as they listen, they say, well, I guess they're thinking in their minds, well, if, if we're not seeking after food, well, then you tell us. They said, what shall we do that we might work the works of God? Verse 28. And Jesus answered them in verse 29. He said, this is the work of God, that ye believe on him who he has sent. And then they said, well, what sign are you going to show us so that we will believe on you? What sign will you show us that we will believe your work? Because our fathers ate manna in the desert as it is written, he gave them bread from heaven. So basically they're saying, well, show us a sign. Maybe if you give us some more food, maybe if you call some food down from heaven, then we will believe in you because our fathers who were in the wilderness, they ate manna from heaven. So show us a sign. So first they came looking for food. Now they won't If you say that you are from heaven, Jesus, show us a sign that we may believe in you. Give us bread from heaven too. And Jesus said, the bread of God is he that cometh down from heaven. Jesus said, I am that bread. He that cometh to me shall never hunger, and he that believeth in me shall never thirst. If you come to me, Jesus said, you won't be hungry again. Jesus is really saying the fulfillment and the answer to our needs are found in him alone. Amen. Amen. No matter how many times you eat, no matter how many times you fill up your stomach, do you know you're going to get hungry again? And some of us consume food at a vast pace. You know, at a vast pace. We eat. And before you know it, we eat it again. And before you know it, we eat it again and again and again. And no matter how many times we eat, do you know the food that lasts? You go to sleep in the morning, everything you eat comes out. Hopefully it does. <laughs> you know? But, but when you come to Christ, Jesus says, when you come to me, 
you will not hunger again. Remember, he said to the woman at the well, I'm going to give you water. And the water that I'm going to give to you, you won't thirst again. That water is going to be in you. It's going to be like a well that springs up. Jesus said, I am the bread of life. If you will come to me, if you will eat me, if you will let me be your Lord, if you will let me be the one in your life to show you life, to give you life, you will never hunger again. The reason people keep going after things and stuff in the world is because it does not bring true satisfaction. That's why many people who have a whole lot of riches and wealth and so on, they're still not happy. Some of them are still killing themselves and, 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 and committing suicide because it does not bring true fulfillment. True fulfillment is found in Christ alone. No matter where you search, you can climb every height you can search under every rock. You can go under every crevice of a life. You can look everywhere and anywhere. And still, the answer to life will not be there. Jesus said, I am the bread of life. And you know what's amazing? He didn't say, I was the bread of life. I will be the bread of life. He said, I am the bread, the bread of life. That is a very present I am. I am the bread of life. I am. And if you go through the book of John, as we will go through, you will see there are several statements that Jesus made over and over again. I am the door. I am the shepherd. I am the bread of life. I am the light of the world. I am, I am, I am, I am what you need. Amen? I am what you need. The thing that you are looking for, the thing that you are seeking for to bring happiness, it is in Christ. The world wants us to believe that the things of the world will satisfy us. Jesus tells a story of a man who his crops had increased. And the Bible said that he said to himself, I, I have so many crops. I, I need to get a bigger space. I need to get a bigger barn. I, I, I need some more space to hold my crops. And the Bible says, Jesus said that he tore down his barns and he built greater ones. And, and, and as he filled up his barns, he was saying, I'm going to say to my soul, soul, you, you have enough to last for many years. How do you know that the things of the world does not satisfy our soul? Amen. Physical things can only meet our physical needs. Spiritual things will meet our spiritual needs. And that's why Jesus said, I am the bread. What you're looking for, I have it. It's not the bread that you were looking for that you ate a couple days ago and now you are looking for more. But I am the bread of life. And so this, this story is Jesus continues. He said, he, he tears down his barn. He builds greater. And he said, so you have enough to last for just rest. Be at ease. You got so much, you don't need to worry about anything anymore. The Bible said that night the question was asked Who? Who are these things going to be for? This night, your soul is going to be required of thee. And what is going to be the answer when your soul is required of you? Is it going to be all the things that you have because they cannot buy eternal life? No matter how much. 
much money we accumulate, no matter how much treasures and riches we accumulate, they cannot buy us eternal life. Jesus said, I am the bread of life. In fact, I am the one who gives eternal life. I am that eternal life that you are seeking. He says, uh, on another occasion, Jesus said, a wicked generation seeks after a sign. These people were looking for a sign. God fed our fathers from heaven so you can do a sign and we will believe in you. But if Jesus did a sign, they still wouldn't have believed on him. He did many signs and miracles. And still, they didn't believe. We have a lot of bargain hunter believers. And after a bargain, they go from place to place just looking for the best bargain that they can find. Give me a bargain. Preach me happy. Yes? Preach so I can feel good. Preach and I'll come back and I'll listen to another message and I can feel good about what I'm hearing. The Bible tells us that in the last days that many will go around looking for preachers and teachers who can scratch their ears. In other words, tell them what they want to hear. That's the generation. That's the world we live in today. Bargain hunting believers. If the bargain's not taking place at this location, then they find the next one. Want our ears to be scratched. Jesus says, Don't come looking for the bread that perishes. Come to me, and I will give you the bread of life. If our interests or our love for Christ is only rooted in what we can have and what He can give us of the material stuff. And that's not true love. Love for the Lord, we love him with all that is within us. And no matter where we find ourselves, that love does not fail. You know, how many of you have seen the publisher's clearing house ad on TV that advertises you can win, I think it's 5,000? 5, 5,000 a week for life? Is that correct? Isn't that interesting? How many of you would love to? Don't put it in your hand. <laughs> yeah, it's true. Listen, if, if, if I can get my hands on that, I'll be set for life. I'm sure somebody would say that, right? Is that true? You know, they advertise, but you know, sometimes I can see it, and I, I know it'll look hard to see. He said, Yeah, right. You know, I wish. That's not really true. That's just bogus. You know, they're just trying to sell you something. Sounds a bit too good to be true. 5,000 a week for life, and you're set. But watch this. Go to John chapter 40, John verse 47 of the same chapter. Come up on this. Jesus doesn't advertise 5,000 a week for life. But listen to what he says. He says, Verily, I say unto you, He that believeth on me hath everlasting life. I am that bread of life. Your fathers did eat manna in the wilderness and are dead. Yes. You were saying that they got bread from heaven, but that was the physical bread, and they ate it, and they are dead. This is the bread which comes down from heaven, that a man may eat thereof and not die. I am the living bread, which came down from heaven. If any man eat of this bread, he shall live forever, and the bread that I will give is my flesh, which I give for the life of the world. That is Jesus who invites us to have the bread of life. And let me tell you, there is no giving. You don't have to buy anything for a chance at eternal life. But eternal life can be yours by believing 
in Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God. If you come to me, Jesus said, I will give you life. You can't pay for it, you can't buy it, but if you will take me as the living bread, I will give you life. No gimmicks, no questions asked. No questions asked, just come and receive. I am that bread. How many of you want that bread? If I asked each one of you, we took a survey now and said, do you want to live forever? Every one of us will say yes, because nobody wants to die, my brother. Nobody wants to die. We want to live forever. But the truth is, we won't live forever on this side, but we will live forever, one place or the other. And Jesus said, I want to give you eternal life. There are two ways, the one that leads to life and the one that leads to death and hell. And Jesus said, if you take me, then you're all set for life, for this life for the next. Come to me. He said, and anyone that comes to me, I will in no wise cast down. Do you want that bread? Amen. Do you want the living bread? Amen. I challenge you this morning. Take, receive, eat, and be filled. Bye, man. No one on earth, no other person has ever or can promise us eternal life but Jesus Christ. No matter where you go, Jesus simply says, I am the way, I am the truth, and I am. No book of a book than the Word of God can truly point us to the way of eternal life. And as you search your heart as we close this morning, what is your answer? What is your response? What is your response? Or, or are you looking for life eternal? Are you following the master to receive a life or are you following just for the temporary stuff? Search your heart today. Where do you stand with God? Where do you stand with Christ? What will your answer be when your soul is required? <coughs> Will you be able to say, yes, Lord? Will he say to you, welcome? Or will he say, see you later, depart from me? You will know, knows the answer to that question. And so, as I get ready to pray, every head bow, every eye close, if you want to be remembered in this prayer, you are at a point where you say, Lord, I don't know where I stand right now. And I don't know. I can't say for sure that eternal life is mine. I'm still searching. I'm still wondering. I'm still trying to find my way. I want to pray with you. And I want to give you an opportunity right now to raise your hand before I do and say, Lord, yes, I need you. I see your hand. Just raise your hand and say, God, I want you in my life. I see your hands. And only
only God knows, this is between you and him, where you stand with him. And you know also. Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we bless you. And we thank you, Lord, for the hands that are raised. God, if there are doubts as to where they will spend eternity, I pray that even in this very moment, God, as they open their hearts to you, in this very moment, God, that they will say, Come, Lord Jesus, I give you my heart. I I give you my life. I pray that in this very moment, Lord Jesus, that you would wash their sins in the blood, that you would cleanse them. Well, what can wash away our sins? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can make us whole again? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. And I pray this morning, God, that your blood would cleanse and wash and remove the stains of sin. The Bible says, you said in Isaiah, come now, said the Lord. Let us reason together, said the Lord. Though your sins be as scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. Though they be red like crimson, they shall be as wool. Oh God, today I pray that they will leave this place with the confidence and the assurance that they have received life and you are that bread of life that brings life to the world. Father, we thank you for this moment and we praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Bless the Lord. And if you have prayed in Believe that God is able and will. Your faith in Him will save you free. Come on and stand to your feet this morning. Hallelujah. He's great. He's an awesome God. Do you hear what I'm saying? Amen. And I want you to believe. Just walk out of here. Knowing with the confidence that you have in life. And no one can take that from you when Jesus gives it to you. He says, those that the Father has given me, I haven't lost. Except the one that was written to be so. Those who come unto me, he said, I will in no wise cast out. Who is the living bread? Jesus. Who is the living bread? Jesus. Say it again. Who is the living bread? Jesus. Ah, bless the name of the Lord.